Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwig Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Panziola from CZT Angie Gittles. All right, so this is cute, and I did not know there that there is such a thing as a Panziola, but spelled with an S. Uh, that is a mix or a cross between a pansy and a viola. Uh, I found this out by uh, in um, in Angie's uh, post on her Instagram where she uh, shows these step outs. Link for that is in the description section. All right, so this starts off with a little orb in the center of wherever you want this. Then, uh, you know, and what's neat is while this seems to be oh, how to draw a, a panziola, I mean, and while it, it kind of is, at the same time, you can still kind of have fun with the non-representationalness of it. Um, and, and, you know, put your own spin on it. But it, ha it uses the elemental strokes, and to me that's, that is important. So we have an orb, and uh, orb orbs using the hollow technique, or you could think of them as uh, C-shaped curve lines. And so those are two of the five. All right, so this one... The next step, I mean, is uh, we're going to do a larger orb. We're going to start on one side. So I'm going to start on the left side here, kind of towards the bottom, and draw a nice orb and coming up on the other side. And the little bit that's hollow about is right behind that orb. Luckily, because we're starting on one side, coming around the other, I usually kind of just slow up so that way I make sure that I'm meeting it up versus when we do a regular hollow bow, and if you're not familiar, it is a tangle and a technique. And usually when we're doing it, you know, we're starting on one side, we're going underneath a, a section and, you know, coming out on the other side where you want to make sure to travel your pen, um, you know, along the path that it would be taking normally, put it down on the other side and continue. This, because we're starting on one side and ending on the other, it makes it a lot easier and like I said, just making sure that, you know, we kind of slow down just to make sure it sort of lines up. All right. Then from the top of this orb, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a, uh, a C-shaped curve line or, you know, or an orb, whichever way you want to think of it. Um, coming from, because I'm doing it to the right, so I'm going a little to the right of the center of that orb and making a nice, another I think it's probably easier to think of it as an orb because we want to have that nice that nice curve and so if you're thinking of it and then you're if you're aiming to end it here that way you can kind of continue on and in, and in your thought process that does kind of help all right then we're going to do the same thing on the other side makes me think of uh, a familiar mouse character sort of <laughs> so you could stop right there and there you go um then we're gonna we're gonna come from the center here, so still coming from that that center orb, and this time we're gonna come up and around, and stop right here. So let's do and and I'm thinking thinking in an of an orb like that. So that way it's like okay, I'm picturing it, you know, ending up back there. And then on this last one, we're gonna center. We're gonna start here. So we're not starting from the center. We're gonna start here. We're going to end here, but again, thinking thinking orb-wise, like that. There we go. Oh, except one last one last step, and we'll start where we uh, we'll start on the last step where we started. So in this section here, coming from that little orb, just a little curved-ish line. I like to kind of flick the pen so it, it lifts up lifts up and makes that taper. So one that's kind of long and then a smaller one on either side, like so. Then over here, same thing. And here. Whoops, that was really long. <laughs> and there we have it. All right, now, you could leave it like this, or if you want to add some shading, we'll add some shading. And I'm going to start by putting just a little bit around the outside. And let me find my, okay, we we'll use that. I bet I have a lot. You know what, I'm going to wipe a little bit of it off. 
because I was using it. There we go. And I'm just going to put some around this little orb. Like so. It kind of helps with that tufted look, you know, and then you could also, this is what I like to do, because otherwise you have that hard edge. And so I just scatter it a little bit so it's, so you don't see that. So it doesn't look contrived. That's such a big thing for me. Just, just me personally. All right. And then if you wanted to, the, the, the couple of like shading, um, it's not really a rule. Like if I'm looking to shade, there's a couple ways I look at it. So one is where things um, connect, you know, or gather. So there's that. Then where things are tucked behind. So we could put a little bit here. I'm kind of going in order that we did things. So I'll do these two first. I'm going to bring that out a little bit. Yes. <laughs> oh, that looks neat. Okay. Then we did this one next. And so as I remember me saying, thinking of this as an orb, hollowed underneath this. So we'll put some graphite on this, on the outside of this line. Mm -hmm. And I might feather it like that just a little bit. And then lastly, here, where this one is behind those two. So we'll put a little graphite on the outside of those. Mm-hmm. If we want to make it a little bendy, as you know, flowers might be, we'll put a little bit of graphite here in this bottom. You can also put it a little distance away. You know, it doesn't have to be right on that edge. You can have a neat effect with that also. Mm -hmm, look at, yeah, see that creates a bend. Now, one way to make it even more bendy is to just Go a little darker with the graphite. And I just put some right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Okay, and then I'm going to use what's left on my tortillon here first. I'm just going to put a little bit on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the side there. On the side here. And notice I, I, I stayed a little distance away from the edge. It still has the, you know, it, it still makes it look curved. But my concern was I didn't want it to just look oh like it's all gray here. So I wanted to have that separation. And then up here, we can do the same thing. And every once in a while, use what's left on your tortilla. Because sometimes you don't necessarily need a whole lot. Because you can always add more. But if this gets packed up... Um, <laughs> then you end up with graphite remorse because it's like, oh, why is it so dark? Oh, because I've, I've been using it for three weeks and, and I, <laughs> I haven't, uh, you know, gotten, you know, gotten rid of anything. I just keep packing it up. So really, really cute. Now you can always, you, if you know, if you want to add color, if you take a look at Angie's uh, sample in the, and, and again, that link is in the description section. She colored it all in and you know, and that's nice. You can also, and I did this as I was playing around with it. Um, I did graphite first, and then I decided, oh, you know what? Why don't I use um, uh, chalk pencils? So ch I use General's Pastel's uh, chalk pencils, and, um, and there are a lot of other brands out there. But what I like about them is that I can treat them the same way as I do the graphite. They, it moves in a similar way. You know, use a tortillon and spread it out. So I, I did the graphite first, same as I did here, and then I decided to put some color on top of that, and then, you know, this yellow in the middle, and just spread it out, just just playing around just to see what it would look like. So, And I think it, it kind of turns out neat. Now, I didn't have to use the graphite. Actually, I had the graphite there. It was just, you know, as I, as I was playing around with it, and I thought it was an afterthought. And sometimes afterthoughts turn out kind of cool. So 
And then I, of course, turned the, uh, I filled in that orb in the center and left a little shine. So I thought that that would be cute. But uh, yeah, fun tangle. Really, really neat. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, would love it if you click the like button. And uh, while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed yet, would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. Uh, I mentioned the description section. Uh, I have links to the step out, so I always do my own version. And then link to the creator of the tangle, so you'll find those two there. As well as ways to connect with me. So if you enjoy this, maybe you want to, or if you've never taken an online class, I would come join us. I teach twice weekly. Thursdays, uh, I'm in Michigan, so it's Eastern time. I do two sessions every Thursday, unless I have a really odd, uh, if, I, if I have a schedule conflict, then we just shift it to a different day, and I do give as much notice as I can. Um, but generally, that doesn't happen. Uh, but so Thursdays, 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. And so you can uh, find information on my website about that. As well as, uh, as well as ways to follow me uh, to see when I post other classes. Because I also teach on Tuesdays. Most of those have a fee or they're a club exclusive because I have a membership club. Uh, which is like an all, you know, all access type of thing. Uh, information is also on my website for that. Um, and there is one Tuesday, the third Tuesday of the month. That one is also free. That's called Tough Tangle Tuesday. So if you really enjoy tangling and, you know... You want to see, <laughs> it's just an extra layer of fun. Sometimes it makes your brain hurt a little bit, but, you know, it's all good. It's kind of like eating ice cream and you get the brain freeze. It's like, yeah, it's so worth it. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, come join us. We have a we have a lot of fun. And, um, and while you're, you know, maybe you join us there, but if you happen to be on Facebook, um, join us on Facebook. We have a private, uh, private group. Uh, for our Tangle Addicts, uh, lots of fun. Um, it, it's an amazing group of people. So we'd love to have you join us. Uh, there are like three questions to gain entry to uh, to that page. So just so you're aware, I also have a link to my own, my Facebook page. So you can follow me there. I do post classes there. So whatever, you know, whatever platforms that you're on, I'm not so good at being on Instagram. Um, and Pinterest, although I do have, I mean, I do have links and accounts there. I just, I need to get better at being on those regularly. So with that, lots of ways to connect, lots of ways to tangle. And I think, I think I hit everything. If I didn't, uh, watch another video and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have, <laughs> I'll have uh, uh, remembered it at that point. Uh, I don't, I, I try to do this off the cuff and not have anything uh, pre-recorded or, or anything because I just, that's the way I like doing things. So with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.